It is now my extreme honor to introduce Professor, uh, Professor Pamela Bernard. Uh, Pam is Professor of Arts, Creativities, and Education at the Faculty of Education, University of Cambridge. No, Cambridge. In the UK. <laughs> Sorry. She co-convenes the British Educational Research Association Special Interest Group, Creativities in Education. It's incredible. You should check it out if you haven't joined. Join. And the Biennial International Conference, Building Interdisciplinary Bridges Across Cultures and Creativities. She gives the um, link to these in, in the abstract a handout that you got when you signed in. She is obviously an international authority on creativities research. She's published widely on creative teaching and learning and the expanded conceptualization of diverse creativities across education sectors and creative industries. And she is an Australian. And she is an alumnus of the University of Melbourne. Welcome. on Sunday. I'm going to speak for 20 minutes. I've got a dance that's, that's choreographed to the second. And I want to say that essentially when you look at this slide, what do you see? I think it reflects what we do all the yes, time. Yes. Every minute. And I want to share with you three artist practices, three practices and the address of the politics, the politics that we actually live with every day. The politics are situated not at the edge, but in the center of all of our practice. Politics are lived through every day, are heard in the discourses, they're heard in the discourses that we have to negotiate and uh, engage with every day. They are read as tensions between the policy and the practice. And they are politics that are observed in the positioning between experts or the so-called experts and how we see ourselves. We are observing politics and engaging and performing politics in every breath. And I do this at work as well. Where I am, I'm at an 800 year old university. It's one thing to be an Australian in that university. It's another to be in music education, arts and creativity. It's another thing to actually try and change the system and to be seen. So I do lots of stuff like this, where I get students and staff, masters and doctoral students, to perform data, to perform the research, to take a risk and to engage in what I call the performance of vulnerability. I'm about to do it myself now. It's where we negotiate, it's where we feel uncertainty, it's where the body becomes a field of political activity. And so, <coughs> I've written a poem. I've written a poem, yes. <laughs> I'm about to perform it, yes, for you today. Awesome. It is the essence, thank you, of my argument. I call it distillation. We read, we speak, we question. We critique a new reading of how art creates a world. How this rap and rhythm, practice or possibility, dance or discourse moves us. And in this movement, where practices meet research, where the relationship between the body, power and reproduction of knowledge is crucial. Understanding the body as its script. And in this Anthropocene epoch, blurring the margins of art and science, making the world strange and new, the undisciplining knowledge, we come to understand the body as its script. Voiced entanglements of self and other. We are not 
not obliged to accept the bias of politicians and journalists who do so little to fight for familiarity, to shift the body from being an object of gaze to the subject of discourse. Understanding the body as it's written. data, <laughs> measuring impact, activating change, where the arts creativities emphasise embodiment and reveals the way that the body acts and interacts as an inscriptive and discursive subject of discourse. So if we think about it, the discourses that have been discussed already. And we think about <laughs> and we think about where we are, thank you. Here were some of the references to theories from theorists and beautiful uh, authors and minds creating a revolution for me and I think us as educators, as researchers, as artists, thank you to all of them and others and looking at creativities and looking at how we work with the authoring, the authoring of creativities, the ways that authoring is more often co-authored and the modalities often are working with technologies and temporalities in ways that differ to different settings and also looking at the principles of the practice. We can't just say, look at creativity when there's digital creativity, there's improvisational creativity, there's pedagogic creativity, there are different types of creativity. And until we start to pluralise and recognise the differences, I think we just remain in the mud. Thank you. Now if we look at this, this is an artist who uses each child culturally and geographically inscribed in a constant dialogue with the planet. Now this is an artist, one of my three, who thinks and looks at the does whole planet thing here. If we can have a look at her Vimeo, if you just Google with the heart of a child and a penguin, they're presently uh, resident at the University of Cambridge Primary School with a principal who is a music specialist, oh, wow. <laughs> politics at play, who has this amazing installation, and I'll talk more as we go through. Note the artful posing of questions. Note a political message in her world. Note that she's trying to connect a global community. I'm just going to show you a snapshot of who is a, a, a Nicola Ravenscroft, who is a arts activist. Water is the heartbeat of our earth. This precious, all-sustaining gift runs deep and clear through the veins of life itself. It is a vital natural resource and forms a greater part of the human body. Water supports the balance of life. It is a prerequisite for health, for infrastructure, agriculture and industry, for poverty eradication and for the future of our planet Earth. But water is profoundly threatened by an advancing tide of consumerism, industrialization, ignorance and greed. Water vulnerability is broad spectrum. It affects mega world economies and the poorest child. And so we have six children, six children from six continents. 
continents of the planet, no humans in Antarctica. So we have a very curious, very, very, very politically charged penguin who represents Antarctica and the Arctic. And if you just go back to the slide and show us the actual installation. That's it. And where they started at a conference in the summer, at build, building interdisciplinary bridges across cultures, a conference that I run every two years. This was a presentation by an artist. From there, we negotiated for this installation to come to the University of Cambridge Primary School and to explore with the teachers the role, the nature of an installation in a school. How do we interact with this? How do the teachers interact? How do the children interact? And what kind of pedagogy, thinking particularly in STEAM ideas here, could we develop in this slide? And so the key themes here, artist practice, balancing the pe pe politics of perspective. She posed artful and political questions with the heart, heart of a child. And there's a penguin. Disseminating a master narrative message artistically and seeing the body as subject of discourse, the posturing of the children and each child actually had characteristics from each continent, the name of which was indigenous or water. Teachers' practices in this University of Cambridge Primary School, we're looking at juggling margins of maneuverability. It's under inspection all the time. So to bring new change and innovation in terms of pedagogy is not so easy to do. We're challenging hierarchies of knowledge, STEM, and we're positioning arts, creativities, using STEAM and developing STEAM pedagogies. The teacher research practices, they're documenting and making visible the discourse. It's hugely political. Everything is. Education is political. We're researching how teachers and children develop and critically understand the disciplinary boundaries and how we can look to solve the world's and Earth's problem collectively and collaboratively in this way. And so, Curriculum plan of creating stories with the children, investigating UNESCO, the rise of the child, exploring thematics of weather, water, time, timeliness, climate change. These are all inspired by the presence of this installation that keeps moving every week. It's in another space in the school. Developing steam approaches to engage with environmental literacies, something that I have is working on, and problem solving issues of sustainability, sustainable education. And the role of the arts is in the center of this. We have to stop marginalizing ourselves, but politicizing the role of the arts in a unique way, playing the historical use of bronze as well. Thank you. The next slide, reflecting on how children live and globally connect, how they belong, their sense of belonging, and looking at language, location, place, and space. Those, those six children come from different continents, just Research it, the continent that they come from, where the water situation is, how they work, how they think, is of interest. And when we win, and I say when because I'm an Australian and I see the glass half full, <laughs> and that is to say we will look at STEAM and how STEAM pedagogies can be developed. And each one of the children, and there's lots of them, Nicola is making them as we speak, there will be a champion in each school across the, 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 the UK a champion for change, a champion for sustainability, a cha champion for global climate debates. Thank you. And so when working with the teachers, and you see the body involved already, they are feeling this, 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 this. You have to touch them, and indeed you can play the penguin. The penguin's hair is like a marimba, a mabira, sorry, a mabira, and it's like a thumb piano. So it's, it's a very visceral and very sensual, it's a very experiential uh, uh, experience, thank you. And we had workshops with the teachers where, with play, they developed and added to this installation, added their own interpretation and interaction with this installation, and of course we moved the installation, reconfiguring, reconforming where, where, the, where the children were, where the penguin was, and then of course sat together and developed some pedagogies and some curricular work, thank you. And you'll see from this next slide, you probably won't go to the film, you won't have to touch the the next slide. Here we see children writing. They, they move the, the, the installation to different spaces across the school. And each time they move, there is a sonic and a sound sort of scape 
that looks at different continent sounds and different practices that in position these children in the lives of this school in different kinds of ways. Thank you. And so with that, how do we conceptualize the arts? This is a long list, I'm sorry. It is complex, I'm not sorry. We are complex and we need to actually start to, and the next time you see this, I will have a 3D kind of interactive uh, kind of representation of arts as con conceptualized in these multiple ways. This does look like it's an expression of making and creating. It does look like arts as creation of world. It does look like arts as object. Arts as object, the object being these children, an installation representing global connections, representing children connecting with the heart of a child and looking at how children hold the answers, solving the problems to the future. Thank you. Another artist who came to our faculty, uh, Susan Jasley, we were wanting to enhance the master's program. Enhance the master's program. Yes, we had part-time students that weren't happy, full-time students that were pretty happy, but essentially, again, I wanted to politicize, in a way, politically position the arts as a way of engaging in an evaluation and a way of enhancing the program. We called it facultatum, a play on the Latin word facultatus, <laughs> meaning capability, possibility, opportunity, skill and ability and had a particular focus on enhancing students' experience of the Masters, of which there's 120 students. Thank you. So there is Suzanne Jasek, Jasek a self-portrait. All those little words are actually the thematics that came out of this experience of an artist working, not to create art, as a, but actually not even to get the students to create art, but to rather make and reflect on practice to create dialogic spaces where reflexivity could occur, reflexivity that was in the title, reflexivity, turning back over one's experience of oneself, a circular process, the looping back, unfolding as a spiral, multiple perspectives, issues of self-reference, we're going to be engaging in lots of reflexivity today, looking at not taking for granted, and I'm quoting Pat Thompson, the ways in which we have narrativized our identities, looking for the social in the individual account, and taking note of particular ways that we work. The dialogic space, thank you, that we work with in this case, that's, that, that's a tricky one, yes, is a, we call it a living inquiry, and we have published this, the, 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 the plan for the sort of theorization of why engage in a living inquiry in higher education with an artist in residence. It's not new, and yet higher education doesn't invest in our development, in our innovation, and in our nourishment. Needless to say, the students as well. Engage the students in different spaces, dialogic thinking, taking many forms, individual reflection, small group thinking, whole planet thinking. And we co-created this dialogic space. So if you go back to the, the, the previous slide, had a URL and you can go there. It's on the Faculty of Education. It's a facultatum report and you can download all the activities that, that she uh, engaged with, with the students just going on there. Researching AG, the intention to engage in the process of inquiry, a living inquiry. So engaging with masters, teachers, teachers who are in charge of uh, leadership and learning masters. There was another one, researching practice, uh, children's psychology uh, development of arts, culture and creativity. There's about 10 different masters courses that we run and each of the people who are convened is engaged with this artist. Let's have a little summary. Activities look like learning journeys, individually using imagery and colour shape, I will illustrate your research journey. Look at the turning points. What were the moments of realization? What are the spark points of your journey as a master student? You know, what they have to do in a year, let alone two if they're part time, is an, a massive ask coming into an institution as a full time teacher and expected to just sort of engage with the learning community and the culture of that place 
and kind of adopt and, and, and be, be, be adaptive. Not so easy for everyone. Looking at the current barriers, we wanted to know what are the barriers to enhancement and looking at paired group and group work. And so here's some evidence. This is one student and her realisation of spark points, turning points. Yeah. Another, eliciting and sharing in another individual work. And very much this sort of bodily engagement. People were on the floor and painting and they were working with shapes or drawing bodies. Classes didn't look like a master's class. Mm -hmm. They looked different and they were looking better. Thank you. And so we ended with a, a master's party with these 200 students outside in the summer. Ripples of the self and circles of influence bringing into the room, thank you, on the floor, circles of influence. We had big, large pieces of round paper that people were asked to represent some aspect of their journey doing the masters. People self-authored, self-reflexively, immersed themselves, came from out in the, in the English sun with cupcakes and croquet and all the things you'd expect to see, to actually put a mark and create and reflect. Thank you. We then took all of these, uh, these circles and Suzanne Jasley created, thank you, this object, which is uh, now a three part, you can sort of almost see that there are three plates, and it stands in the uh, postdoc uh, graduates uh, uh, center office, and it's the first thing everybody sees when they walk into that office, reminding them of how the role that the arts play in our growth, in our experience, and again, conceptualizing arts, how do we conceptualize it, have to move on. Let's look in that particular role. Changing the discourse at this point is this notion of hierarchies of, of knowledge. And we've been sold this business of the arts are soft and not important. I don't buy it anymore. It's a political message and we need to rethink and reposition the arts in a way like you see it in space maker spaces with technologies and in startup companies working together. The arts is in there just doesn't look like what it does in school. So why are we not working with connecting these learning communities in these spaces? Thank you. So the politics of complexity, lots of politics, and we move to the next slide, please, to do with Anthropocene, to do with interdisciplinary, und un undisciplining the professions. Is there such a word as predisciplinarity? Yes. What if an artist from Scandinavia from Denmark meets up with Greenlandic dancers and Scandinavian and puts together a choreography which attempts to put a political message about the dialogue between the imbalance of man and the balance and the imbalance in the iceberg. And the Danish uh, government is very interested in the Arctic. Lots of people are interested in the Arctic. Denmark is leading research in this area. And this particular installation. It is a dance installation, it's an intercultural installation. It's touring the world, thank you, because it is not the next one. This is the dance, the dance itself, the black, the video of the dance. It's a, I'm just going to show 30 seconds or less of just bits and pieces of this particular dance because it shows again the role of the body. The body has a discourse. And dance, thank you. So, I'm just going to fast forward through a little bit of this. You see there's a, a, a Greenlander dancer and a Scandinavian dancer, thank you. This particular choreographer only works, always works in intercultural contexts. And of course this is about melting, it's called melting ice, and it's about moving from an iceberg to Yes, I can see you moving in, I know. Oh, I can see it. I just want to end with a little bit of music. Will it play? The people in the audience are politicians. Icelandic and Danish politicians. And if we look at the emphasis on the body, which allows one to consider not simply how discourses and practices create ideology, but how these practices construct certain sorts of body with particular power, 
creativities and capacity. The politics of research, the politics and how embodied, how it's embodied in your practice. How is it embodied in your practice? How are the politics and how you're addressing it embodied in your research? It should be at the centre and the centre of your educational practices as well. I'm reading from Liz McKinley's latest book, Teaching and Learning Like a Feminist, which is a fabulous, fabulous book, and I know she's with us in spirit here. Embodiment, a very critical lens to re-negotiate and redefine arts and arts creativities. Thank you.